Welcome everybody uh, to Radiator Comics Studio. My name is Neil Bridot. My pronouns are he, him. I run Radiator Comics, which distributes self-published and small press comics, graphic novels, and zines. Tonight, we're celebrating the release of the third issue of our South Florida comic arts journal, Spiny Orb Weaver. Um, tonight's program is made possible with support from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. And Spiny Orb Weaver is funded by the Ellie's, Miami's uh, Visual Arts Award presented by Oolite Arts. Um, and we're uh, grateful for both Oolite Arts and for the Knight Foundation's um, support. We are broadcasting tonight from stolen Miccosukee land. The people from whom the land was stolen are still here and still caring for this place. It's also important to acknowledge the history of African-American, Bahamian, Haitian, and other Caribbean people whose labor made South Florida what it is today. Uh, we have a responsibility to be better neighbors to the people and places where we're located and to work to dismantle white supremacy. Expressing one's ideas and feelings through zines and comics can be really powerful. And one of our hopes with programming like tonight's is to make those tools of expression more accessible. Um, so thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, each issue of Spiny Orb Weaver features a new comic by a local cartoonist and an interview with them. And then in the back pages of the zine, uh, we invite former South Florida residents to reflect on their time here. Um, the featured cartoonist for issue three is Miami's Jamila Rouser, who provides us with a 12 page comic about four elemental gods who need to clean up their reputation with mortals. So they agree to star in a reality TV show. Um, the comma, uh, sorry, the comic is drawn with great energy by Buttercup. And this issue's back pages features a conversation between Remus Jackson and Mar Julia about how growing up in South Florida impacted the comics that they make. Um, so tonight we'll be treated uh, to a couple presentations by Jamila and Buttercup and um, their process for this issue's uh, comic. And then uh, followed by that, a short conversation with Remus and Mar uh, before we open up the event to some more questions from me and hopefully from some of you in the audience as well. So um, ready to get started? Uh, yeah. Cool. So Jamila Rouser is a writer and publisher who enjoys creating comics for black and brown women, whether it's through writing the stories herself or publishing the work uh, of others through Black Jose Press. Jamila is also the founder of the international meetup group Geek Girl Brunch, uh, creator of the hip hop geek culture project Straight Out of Gotham, and creator of the former blog Girl Gone Geek. She's also worked in tech and social media for almost a decade. Uh, Jamila's award-winning comic, Wash Day, drawn by Robin Smith, will be expanded into a graphic novel, Wash Day Diaries from Chronicle Books in spring 2022. And just yesterday, uh, Jamila and Robin were included in Adweek's Creative 100 list. Congratulations to both Jamila and Robin, who's here with us in the audience. Thank um, you. So I'm going to hand <laughs> the presentation over to Jamila. Okie dokie. Let me make sure I share the right screen, of course. Okay, y'all can see that. That is good. Okay. All right, all okay, right, I'm good. <laughs> so um, I am going to be talking about the making of Real Realm, well, at least the writing part. So that's the comic that is in this um, issue of Spiny Orb Weaver. Um, and it has kind of an interesting origin story, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of talk about how it started and where it ended up. Um, and I'm always, as a writer, interested in how other comic writers and creators create comics. Um, so I figure I'd at least like let y'all behind the curtain and see my process. So, all right. So the comic started, uh, or the idea for the comic originated a couple of years ago. I was in a um, writing workshop that my friend Shante Cozier led in Brooklyn. Um, and then kind of fun fact, Shante, she's a writer um, and she um, runs the candle shop Ponty Wax, which did, she did a Kickstarter for wash day candles for, and she was the one who made them. So she like, she does everything. Um, and so in the workshop, she would give us these prompts 
and we would spend a few minutes writing based off of the prompts that she gave us. And I was the only one who wrote comics in there. And so I felt more comfortable coming up with comic ideas instead of prose. So I would, which was fine, like it didn't matter. So um, for, we did a couple prompts in that class and this was one specific prompt and this is actually a scan of the handout that she gave us and like my original notes and good luck trying to read my handwriting. Um, <laughs> and it is based off of a poem by the poet Morgan Parker. Um, and it's called, if my housemate gets so, if my housemate fucks with me, I would get so real audition tape, take one. Um, and it's in her book, Other People's Comfort Keeps Me Up at Night. So I'm not gonna read the, the whole poem. It's online though, um, for free to read. But um, basically our assignment for that prompt was to include some lines from that poem into something that we wrote. So I was really drawn to the specific lines. If I hear you talking shit about me in your confessional interview, please know seven birds have fallen dead at my feet right out of the sky. Um, I really love Morgan's work and I really love the poem. It gave me like deity vibes mixed with like messy reality show stuff. Um, and I really loved that. I loved the like godlike power, but these like uncouth or uncouth women um, acting rude and crude. So um, I created a comic, a little mini comic based off of that. And these are scans uh also like my handwriting is it's awful um but these are scans of the uh what I wrote so I kind of like as you can see there's some stick figures because I planned to do thumbnails but I ran out of time um but I have the name real realm um it came to me back then um so the title was like real realm season three and I had a goddess of death and Hades and a demigod and 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 I think Hades and, and the demigod were fighting, like somebody slept with somebody else's man and it got a little vulgar, a lot more vulgar than, than real realm ended up being. Uh, but I thought it'd be cool to show because I try to like keep all of all these notes and I like going back to kind of seeing the, the origin of them. And so I really loved this idea um, out of that workshop, like this is the one that really stuck with me that I was like, I wanna make this a comic. Um, so I have my long list of comic ideas. Um, and so I kept coming back to it and thinking like, all right, what, like, when will I do this? Um, and so when Neil approached me about Spiny Or Believer, I was like, yes, this is the perfect moment. So I didn't want it to be long, although it could, but I just try to pace myself. So um, I, when it came time to start writing it, I was like, all right, what am I trying to say with this comic? Um, and even if it's not completely obvious to the reader, like maybe they just see the fun messiness of the reality show, which is fine. Um, like I needed to know what was guiding me as I was writing this story. And so um, it was really about like the power of seeing the mighty, you know, the celebrities, the leaders, the gods have imperfections like us. Um, and how that can make us remember that we are gods just, uh, just like them. Um, and also some anti-respectability stuff because I'm all about not respectability politics. And of course, I love, I live for the drama. <laughs> so it was like, I wanted it to be a fun comic with like this sort of deep meaning hidden in, inside of it um, because who doesn't love drama? Like. That's why these reality shows are doing so good. So this is um, time for me to start writing. <laughs> and so my writing process for a lot of my comics, but not all of them, um, typically start with like a brain dump where I have a doc and I just write a bunch of ideas, uh, lots of like random dialogue, um, things that I think should happen things I want to make sure uh, are like subtly included in the comic other random notes like it's just long and it's a mess and I just dump it all out on the page and I do that over and over again it's kind of this like rinse and repeat um situation and I start to slowly like whittle it down to something more concrete and I slowly start to really find the story in all of that brain dump um and then once I do that, once I feel like I have a good skeleton of the story in that, 
then I will start to um, create some rough notes on the backstory and the character profiles. Um, just so I have more of a fuller understanding of, you know, the motivation behind the characters and the backstory. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, and then I start to break things out into rough page beats, um, like real rough. <laughs> um, and then I like kind of refine that a couple of times and then I build that into a full script and then uh, edit that script a couple of times. And then I send it off to the editor. I hope it's not trash. Um, and with this script in particular, like I just am an anxious person and edits give me anxiety, but I also love them at the same time. Like I would like, I don't know if I'd want to create a comic without it being like reviewed by an editor, like ever. I think I, everything I've written has been reviewed by an editor. Um, it's just like, I become a better writer, I become a better storyteller. It helps me see things that I um, just am not able to see because I'm so wrapped up in a story. And so with this one in particular, Neil was really awesome. Um, helped, he helped me make it a lot clearer um, and even make the story like a lot fuller despite the page length, with, despite it being just 12 pages. You know, we're getting a slice of a very large world and he helped me come up with some really awesome ideas to um, kind of give the reader a glimpse into the past season and what these characters are like. Um, and, I, and I changed a couple of things in the um, in the scripts, like the intro is completely different um, and all that stuff. So yeah, shout out to Neil. And then I'm not gonna read this, don't worry, but this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is like the backstory and the character descriptions I came up with to share with Neil and Buttercup um, because it's like you know fantasy kind of world I needed to understand like how these gods existed with the mortals what the world is like um, you know the sisters who are the gods they call them the sisters um, how you know they're just understanding like why they're even on this show in the first place like even if you may not find out as a reader like I need to know like why the hell would they be on this show um and so I create that whole thing and then um also with the characters just understanding how they interact with each other their personalities and their styles I, I think a lot about like their fashion style versus how they look like physically um and so yeah that is that is a background doc. And then this is an example of a script page. Um, this is the first page of the story. And it looks mad long. Um, <laughs> it's a splash page. But what I really like to do is whenever like I want the script to have everything the artist needs. So they don't have to go in between different docs. Um, so they could go back to that character description doc if they want, but they don't need to because I got all that info in the script. Um, and so, um, yeah, so basically that's why it's a little bit longer. Um, and then I link to reference images uh, and I'll have reference image folders sometimes too. Um, and when it comes to reference images, I basically like how I decide what I think should include a reference image is if um, it's like an expression that may be hard for me to describe, I'll start to include like a couple of examples. Um, or if it's something that I know, like most folks don't know what it looks like off the top of their head, I'm like, well, let me just Google it and get some images like a TV studio camera for existence. Like I was like, I don't know if Buttercup has that in his mind, in their mind already. So, um, so yeah, so then I'll work on getting reference images. And um, I like to do mood boards. Um, depending on the comic, I might do it for like the character or I might do it for the setting or like the overall style of the comic. So with Real Realm, I did one for the sisters, which is a bit of mess and a bit of godliness um, and yeah and also with the characters um i don't usually have like specific thoughts on their style um 
I just want to make sure that it's just usually their fashion style, if that's important, and um, leaving a note for the artist that I want to make sure that their like skin color, hair, and body type is diverse, just so it's yeah, not bad. <laughs> And then the script is ready for Buttercup. So um, even though I give the artists everything I think they would need, hopefully, um, I really like to treat my script as a guide um, and ha let the artists know that they have the freedom to make the changes that they think would improve the comic. Um, it just makes for a better comic, makes for a better story, and I want it to feel more like a collaboration. Um, if it's something that they want, like they could totally just go buy, buy the book. Um, but most of the time when they start to edit things, it makes things better. Um, and Buttercup was amazing. They're really excited about um, the story, which made me happy. And they even came up with some like really cool new ideas and backstories for characters. So it really was like so great working with them. And that is my presentation. <laughs> That was really great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jamila. Um, so, uh, so in in your presentation, you mentioned that that edits give you anxiety, um, and like, but <laughs> you also mentioned does, how. So. how oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned how important it, it is for you too, um, mm -hmm. and in addition to writing comics, you you also publish and edit other people's comics. Um, uh, and and like you said, your writing process is like open and collaborative. How do you approach editing other people's comics? I feel very, like I feel like a baby comic writer, even though I've done a couple. Um, and I feel even more of like, like a embryo of a editor. <laughs> um, but I think I just like to, well, Sun and Sand, I think, was really the one. Oh, you know, the Sun and Sand um, anthology that we did, I edited. Um, there are some comics like with um, Arrive in My Hands that Trinidad Escobar is working on that I'm really hands off on because I just like don't like feel the need to be involved. Uh, like I'll read it if there's something that comes out, then I'll say it. But it, I'm not really like that hands on. Um, then I did edit the script for um, the Mar Mari Soul project that one of their copywriters wrote. There was a lot of edits. So I, <laughs> I tried to come to it with like making sure that it is set up well for uh, the artist if it's like the car, if the person who created it isn't like the cartoonist. Um, and it's, telling like the story in the best way that they want it to be told. Uh, but honestly, like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't feel like super, like I want to be a better editor. And so I think working with editors helps me learn how to be a better editor. Um, I think about pacing and stuff a lot. Like a lot of the things that I think about when I'm writing comics, um, I try to bring to the editing process. Um, but I always, the anxiety specifically that I have um, that I'll mention is I get anxiety about like whether I'll be able to make those edits, like if I'll be good enough to like do them and I would get like so nervous and then I finally start to do them and I'm like, girl, you got this, like, why are you worrying? Um, but that's how anxiety works. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> true, true. Um... <laughs> Cool. Thanks so much for that presentation. That was really fantastic. Thank you. Um, we are going to turn our attention now that the script has been written over to Buttercup. Welcome, Buttercup. Um, Buttercup is a multidisciplinary artist based in Hyattsville, Maryland, with a focus in illustration, sequential art, and 2D animation. They work to compose hand-drawn digital depictions of fantastic, familiar moments of Afro-diasporic and indigenous life with a specific focus on queer and gender non-conforming identity. And their work has a distinctly science fiction, fantasy, anime feel. So welcome, Buttercup. Thank you, Neil. 
Uh, you mentioned at the top of the meeting the um, uh, land, the occupied land that, that um, uh, South Florida is built on top of. I wanted to just uh, like say that I'm broadcasting from Hyattsville, Maryland, which is on stolen Piscataway land, and that it was for the former home of the Nakachatank people. Um, and I just like think that it's always important to uh, reify and remind ourselves that like these people are still alive, you know. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I have a little bit of a presentation, but I'm not 100% sure what it is that I want to do or say with it, but let's just hop into it. Okay. Is it visible for everybody? I'm basically just sharing from my, like, uh, what do you call it, browser, my, my desktop browser, but like through my iPad. It's very complicated and I'm expecting it to fall apart very quickly. Um, so uh, this is a screenshot of the, um, the, the cover of the uh, script that Jamila sent me. And I big empathize with her about the like uh, social and um, uh, occupational anxiety aspect of this. But honestly, when uh, she uh, emailed me about this project, like she could attest to this, my response was absolutely, bitch. Yes, like <laughs> I'm immediately on board. I'm all the way the fuck on board. Um, uh, I didn't know what the concept was, didn't know what was going on, but like I like was just super excited to work with Jamila. Um, uh, I kind of want, can I, can I tell the story about like how we connected? So um, uh, a few years ago, my friend um, uh, uh, Margarita, who is, uh, uh, who works, who has a, um, uh, a zine publishing and redistribution and just general uh, company called 350 Collective or like um, they are the like uh, the person who founded it but they're literally collective and uh, they offered to do a short run of a series of um, uh, artworks that I did called Arthropod, which is about a, um, a young Black uh, gender nonconforming kid and their imaginary friend who likes to sh shapeshift into a bunch of different um, bugs and like things like um, uh, just arthropods, you know, crabs, uh, various things, butterflies. Um, and so I did like a series of things and they turned it into an art book. And um, uh, Jamila, it, they like uh, were at my Miami Zine Fair, I think is that what it was. And uh, Jamila picked up a copy, and I, I guess uh, y'all traded that with Wobble D3000. And uh, uh, Mar, uh, Margarita, um, sent me a photograph of Jamila holding arthropod and like that was the first time that I ever saw Jamila before and like I was like I don't know what's going on thanks Margarita for this picture or whatever <laughs> like cool I guess super dope um, like jump to like a year and a half later um, uh, like I like you know I, I read Wawa D3000 really thought it was fantastic and like like just relatable content just all around and uh like I was like oh wow this like first it seems the person who wrote this seems really like cool but like in a super dirty way um and then like I think a year and a half later uh, I went to small press expo in Bethesda which is like local um it's like down the street from me and a bunch uh I like um I just ran into Jamila or like saw her like on the floor and like I was like, I know that person from somewhere. I have no idea who they are though. And after a while of just like hanging out with people who were in our like mutual friend circles, like it clicked and I was like, wait, that's Jamila Rouser. Like that's the person who wrote all of me 3000 and like, and like who has arthropod and like, um, I'm just going way over time, but my point is that I didn't have any expectation that we would ever work together, uh, and I don't think that we even spoke more than a couple words at, at SPX, but we ended up connecting on social media afterwards, and uh, like just in the back of my mind, I was like, I would love to work with this writer, and when she sent me the email, I was like, this is a dream come true, like <laughs> I was freaking out, so um, this is the the script that Jamila sent, and it's very thorough. It's exactly what she um, showed previously. All of the materials that I wanted um, uh, or like needed to have access to were already embedded in the script. Plus, each of these links links to a, a Google um, Drive um, 
uh, folder that has like a bunch of reference images and stuff. Um, she is so great with that. Uh, and I want to get that out of the way before I announce that like it's part of my process to uh, super duper change everything <laughs> about it. Because I like was like I need it in dark mode. I need everything to be mono space, and like uh, I specifically need these little panel signifiers um, just for my own brain to be able to like process all of the the text. And so like this is the document that I was like referring back to while I was working on the script. But obviously, it's all exactly the same content. I just wholesale copied and pasted it into a word processor and mono spaced it and uh, did like my my signature double slash thing that I do. I don't know why it's help. It's helpful for me to be able to visualize. Like if I'm trying to find page three, I can scroll for a bit and be like, okay, I've seen three of those. So that's that's where we're at. Um, uh, and so uh, in adapting the characters, um, I this is like the first thing that I did that I started working on as soon as I got the um, uh, script from Jamila and like started conceptualizing the story is like, okay, we got to figure out what these sisters are like. And um, it's interesting because like you see the the notes that she gave for each of the sisters. Um, uh, this Ebony is the god of earth. hallmarks felt really real to me but when I thought earth goddess the first thing that I thought was Missy Elliott and so I just was like that's the direction that I'm taking this 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 and like I feel like it worked out I like oh, I just I love the designs for all of them all these girls um uh for Aisha the god of, goddess of air god of, god of air artsy neo soul type hippie flowy boho art ho Janae Aiko Erica Badu um i wanted to shirk convention a bit and like I was like what if the like darkest skin sister is the one who is the air goddess and like just is like the most enlightened uh of the the four and like like dark skin representation is a uh I don't even want to say mixed bag it leans real bad uh in terms of like how media portrays dark skin femme specifically and so like I wanted to like have her be the one that I personally liked the most and like leaned into that energy um uh, so she's like confident in her femininity but also like only vaguely there for the bullshit she's like i'm doing this because like i'm trying to catch a bag so that i can like keep paying for my weed and bills like that's the reason why she's there for real um and like you know she's also a mediator she cares about her sisters and like like wants to see them thrive and like she doesn't ex expect much of them in my mind but at the same time is like if put in, the, in this situation she'll try and help um and then uh there's fatima um uh, God of Fire, Punk, Rico Nasty, uh, Alternative, Edgy, Rock. Uh, Rico Nasty is probably the biggest like wholesale um, like inspiration that I decided to just lean into for this character. I would say like a mix of Rico and maybe like Jada Pinkett Smith back when like during her like metal days um, and like during the the Matrix trilogy um, and like I. I, I love her. I really don't have much to say. It's a very like surface level, just like Fatima all the way. Um, <laughs> um, and then Juanita, God of Water, glamorous, fabulous, luxury, diva, Beyonce, red carpet style. Um, and like, uh, I, I really like that idea, but the, the like uh, specific groundedness of the story because it is you know titled Real Realms based on reality TV. I like felt like Beyonce might be too real live God to like to just like pluck from reality and put into this world. And so like I was like, who feels like proximal but not quite there? And so my hallmark in my mind was um, uh, Angela Bassett in. Um, uh, uh, Black Panther as Queen Ramunda. Is that this, is that the right actor? Um, and, uh, and, uh, like, but like aged down and like, you know, like really here for the mess. Um, and so like, these are the aunties, the sisters, these are the gods of, uh, the world. And I'm really just like, uh, I, it was a real pleasure bringing them into reality. Um, 
And after I got done designing them, I wanted to come up with the designs for the uh, secondary and tertiary characters that Jamila listed in the script. So there's Sean, who is uh, Fatima's ex. Um, uh, and, and once you get a, a physical copy of the book, you'll see what role he plays. But um, there's a line in the script that says that he has at least been in a relationship with the sisters for hundreds of years. And um, I, in my mind, that brought up a, a question or a problem that was like, wait a second, is this just like a regular person or is he also a god? And like Jamila was really open to whatever sort of interpretation I wanted to go with for it. And so I ended up like suggesting the idea like, what if, you know, a thousand, two thousand years ago, like Fatima ended up in uh, like a, like reluctantly ended up in a relationship with like some like North African bodybuilder dude who's like a real like himbo type um, and like as he got older and realized that she wasn't getting older he was like oh my god like my body's falling apart like I'm getting older like all this stuff and she just like heard him and just like interpreted everything he was saying as bitching and moaning and was just like okay okay well, like what do you want me to do about it like what do you want me to do about it do you want me to like give you a bronze body or something I can do that for you if you want and he's like what really like <laughs> you can give me a bronze body and so like she basically transformed him into this like actual like bronze man uh and that's the reason why he's been able to like survive all this time uh like knowing the sisters and um uh no spoilers quite really i mean you'll I'm okay with spoiling the story, but I like kind of want those of you who, have, who haven't read it yet to like kind of be shocked by the the reveal. But like, um, uh, let me just say that like after that happened in my mind in my head canon, Fatima was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like invented this bronze man anymore. But then Juanita was like, ooh, look at this metal man over here. <laughs> um, and so like that's my head canon. Then there's Mandy. Mandy is the host and uh, producer of Real Realm, um, and the hallmarks for her. Um, uh, well, has anyone seen the new TV show Invincible? Um, uh, yeah, there's a character in that show whose name is Tawny, and she's like very clearly just a wholesale Wendy Williams ripoff. Like, uh, and like when I was like, I hadn't seen the that show yeah and like that that character doesn't exist in the comics i don't think so like i didn't have a, a like that idea in mind from like as a derivative idea i was just like when i heard that it was a host of a messy tv show i was like i gotta go with like the, the main hallmark in my head is like i gotta go with my girl wendy <laughs> like um and so like imagine a younger uh like more thrill seeky like uh like really wanting to be among the mess sort of um uh character who like i imagine that as the producer she's on set every day hoping that something goes bad so that she can run from it like that's she kind of like gets a thrill from that kind of thing um and then we've got the uh unnamed audience member who um like though uh, they're unnamed in the script. I wanted to come up with a little bit of a, let me see if I can find a, a later version. I wanted to come up with a backstory for this character, even though uh, they don't uh, appear very prominently. And so you'll see on this page, um, they are asking a very, uh, or they are interrogating uh, the, the value of this show as a whole and like, um, uh, I imagine that this is a person whose child is a Stan, like a, the Stan of the sisters. And so I designed this uh, character who's sitting next to her um, as like the person who dragged her along to this um, uh, reality show reunion. And like, I imagine that they're like, if we were to expand this universe more or to like explore other corners of it, that maybe we would be seeing it partially through their eyes, this like um, uh, anti-believer, uh, 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 Akira and this like traditionalist Tina who are on different sides of the spectrum understanding like what celebrity culture is like but like both engaging with that and necessity because they're family members and so that's like a thing that I think that I like thought about in my process I know that like there's a bunch of artistic things that I could have explored here but like I just love the character so much that I ended up gushing so <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about like briefly like give me two minutes uh of uh like the fact that i like um 
took Jamila's notes and explored the space that the comic takes place in and like really wanted to make it feel as real as possible. Um, and um, so I did uh, a blueprint and this sort of like um, <clears throat> uh, architectural uh, like sketch just to like have a better idea of the space. Um, so that like, even though I'm shooting it from a bunch of different angles, at the very least, I know where the cameras whether they're metaphysical or like literal as in like film cameras where they are in the space and what their sort of like visual vector is um and i just wanted to like really quickly show a couple um a few of the iterations of this of the um comic this is the very first image that i sent jamila um after the character designs i had this uh like she described a two page spread and I got really excited about it. And I was like, why don't I just paint it in, in color for fun? Um, and like, uh, it's interesting seeing the contrast between what ended up in the, in the book and the initial sketch, the very first sketch that I did versus because it, uh, of how big it is, it's probably one of the pages that I worked on last. So you get to see what it is that I did first and one of the last things that I worked on. Um, I'll just do like a quick scroll through. You see that I did a uh, more sketchy uh, interpretation of the script. And then uh, later on, I did a uh, draw over of the sketchy version with a little bit more refined lines. And then this is like <clears throat> maybe one or two orders away from being complete. And then line art is the final line art that I sent Neil. And then the full composite, uh, but like without the final edits. And then this is a rough uh, sketch of the, the cover. If you haven't seen it yet, it looks like this. Um, but this is like the initial sketch that I did for it, plus colors and the logo. And then you see the final version. And that's it. I'm sorry, I took up so much time. <laughs> That was really fantastic. That was great. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, it's like while while the process was going on, but then also like now seeing this stuff, like it's just mind blowing the amount of work that both you and Jamila put into this comic. Um, it's yeah. it's really amazing. Um, I was hoping that you know one of the things that I was thinking about when preparing for this uh, event was that in this issue of Spiny or Orb Weaver, Buttercup, you're the only person who um, we don't hear from directly. Um, everyone else literally has like words that they said or wrote in print. So I was hoping maybe you could um, take a couple of minutes just to like talk about the, the work that you enjoy doing. Um, you have a really amazing web comic called Oom um, that um, has, has a very distinct like illustrative style, like that differs from from the one in in this comic, um, and maybe just like talk about um, the work that you enjoy doing and um, the specific comics that you um, are making on your own. Word, um, yeah. So earlier, like back in high school, I really wanted to get into uh, like filmmaking, like particularly like somewhere between blockbuster and heavy indie. Like if you remember the movie. Uh, Never now I can't remember it. Maybe it's just called Life or Life is Beautiful, Life is Strange. I can't remember. Um, but it was just like this sprawling, weird, disconnected narrative um, uh, about all, like the course of a single person's life or generational transference and stuff like that. And like that's the kind of thing that I was planning on making career-wise. But I ended up going to University of Southern California and realizing white supremacy existed. And I was like, I don't think this is for me, right? Um, but what I wanted to to uh, I still only had training in being able to tell stories. And so I like decided, okay, the reason why I wanted to get into film in the first place is because I, I feel like I have a clear skill set that's diversified in a bunch of different media, uh, writing, uh, uh, artwork, composition, um, a little bit of graphic design and acting, uh, or at least being a huge critic of my own acting. So uh, uh, I was like, um, 
maybe there is another way that like isn't necessarily collaborative that I can interpret these ideas, these grandiose like um, uh, filmic ideas that I have. And obviously I, ha I had grown up with comics, uh, particularly Marvel comics. My uncle um, bought me a bunch of Spider-Man and um, uh, X-Men comics. And, um, uh, and I also religiously wrote, read the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, from my Archie, Archie comics, Sonic the Hedgehog series, uh, RIP. Uh, and um, uh, eventually, like just out of my own fascination about like trying to find alternative ways of telling stories, I stumbled into the indie comic scene. Um, you know, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of all the stuff that I've read, but I've definitely read some really interesting and fantastic stuff most recently. Uh, uh, you know what, I'm not even gonna, I have no names to drop, I'll just mess it up. But <laughs> uh, I've been <laughs> really fascinated by finding new and interesting ways of interpreting like things that could be considered cinematic and putting them on the page. And part of the reason I think, um, like I when you were like, you're the one person who had who didn't have any words written down in this comic um, or in this journal, in this issue, uh, I was like, that's okay, because I feel like, um, I think holistically about expression and like that, uh, like verbal language, written language, uh, visual art, music, dance, like any sort of interaction that humans have with the cosmos, I ha like think of as art. And so like, I think that it's beneficial in terms of like my, uh, like, uh, lack of general judgment on the human like species, uh, but it's not so great at like remembering specifics about <laughs> like certain things that I like or don't like about uh, certain pieces of media. But I have like a very um, internally um, intense sense of aesthetic and just like a sort of a comfort space that I like to uh, occupy when it comes to my own art. And so I kind of just like am laser focused on crafting things that reflect that. Um, um, my comic uh, uh, started out as a, uh, a like a reflection slash part of the grieving process when I like lost uh, an ex-partner uh, back in 2013 and like slowly over time as I like uh, explored the political concerns that like they and I shared um, and like my growing sense of like self uh, esteem, self knowledge, uh, awareness of like what I wanted the world to look like, it like transformed into the story that is like my vision um, of like what sort of things I would like to see more of in the world. So it stars a dark skin, um, a gender nonconforming person a, like uh, non-binary femme who uh, works as a birth worker. And there's, so there's a lot of like um, birth work and talk about thematically um, birth work and sex work and um, technology, different forms, the history of technology in the comic. And it, but at its core, it's also a magical girl comic because I remember when I was a kid, like really enjoying uh, Sailor Moon and like I had a VHS of like the original Japanese uh, like, um Sailor Moon show and like I remember the like weird awe that I felt watching those not being able to interpret what was going on at all and like I kind of wanted to like you know pull that childhood memory out and put it on the page but like as a political statement and so that's basically what um is in a, in a big way um but yeah that's that's all I've got <laughs> nice thanks buttercup mm -hmm. Um, we're going to shift gears again and um, bring in Remus and Mar. Um, Remus Jackson grew up in South Florida, but currently lives in Gainesville, pursuing a PhD in English at the University of Florida. They make, uh, um, they make comics such as the PRISM award-winning See Me, published in 2019 by Discat Press, and have been featured in multiple anthologies, including the Ignatz award-winning We're Still Here, published by Stacked Deck Press. Um, they also co-host the Comic Studies podcast, Drawing a Dialogue with Kathy Johnson, who is here with us on the screen. Um, and uh, they spend most of their time taking pictures of their Twitter famous cat, Kenny. Um, and then uh, Mar Julia is a cartoonist originally from South Florida, who is currently making comics from Baltimore, Maryland. 
Their debut graphic novel, Brownstone, uh, in collaboration with Samuel Tier, is scheduled for release in 2022 from Versify. They were nominated for Outstanding Mini Comic and Promising New Talent uh, for the 2019 Ignatz Awards for their comic, Yellow, 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 published by Diskette Press. And their comic, Streams of Consciousness, was featured in the 2020 Prism Award-winning anthology, Heartwood, from Power and Magic Press. And they also like to pet cats. Um, so welcome, Remus and Mar. Um, so your piece in Spiny Orb Weaver is uh, a written conversation between um, the two of you about the influence growing up in South Florida has had on your comics. And you talk a lot about nostalgia and um, trying to evoke the feelings that you get when you think about um, the, both the built and natural environment of the region. Um, and I was hoping um, for those who haven't read the conversation yet, if you could tell us a little bit about what you learned in the process of writing your conversation and what are some major takeaways from that? Do you want me to start, Mar? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So for context, Mar and I um, met in the sixth grade um, <laughs> and we went to middle and high school together uh, and then lived together after college also for a bit. So. Um, we sort of have a very similar, because we went to the same schools, we both grew up in sort of similar areas, we have sort of the same experiences um, uh, growing up in South Florida and like have similar, like, it's just really interesting to think about um, as an adult, because as a 18 year old, I was extremely desperate to get out of South Florida. Um, like <laughs> ran away to Philadelphia for college, right? At the earliest opportunity. Um, and uh, I, 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 and then sort of just like the older I get, the more I'm sort of like, yeah, but like all this stuff still shows up in my work all the time, right? And there's sort of so we were really we're talking about sort of like the ways that this sort of consciously or unconsciously, like having grown up in South Florida and um, that sort of aesthetic and also sort of experience ends up sort of informing the visuals and narrative choices that we make. Yeah, and. Um... For me, when we were teenagers, it was less about like, I don't know, like getting out of Florida, where it's like, Remus's family is generally from the South already. Um, mm. My uh, family, my mom's family is from Boston, and my dad's family is all Dominican from New York. So my family is from the Northeast anyway, but I was like, lived in Florida since I was like, before I can remember, I was like two years old. Like, we moved down there, so I grew up as a Floridian, but like, leaving was less about like, getting the hell out of Florida <laughs> and we're like, oh, I have family in New York, I'll go to New York. Um, uh, and thinking about like the nostalgic sensory aspect of like basically anyone's childhood is really interesting to me. Um, I really love when like, not just comics, but like any like media can evoke like a sensory reaction where it's like you're reading something or you're watching something and like it evokes something either like from you like like when you see someone and you're talking about a story and you're like, shit, me too. Like, I love work that can evoke reactions like that. Um, and a really, really like potent one for most people mm -hmm. is like childhood nostalgia and stuff like that. Um, and also just like growing up in an area can like heavily inform kind of just like what settings and what themes and what like things you like to draw in my case, stuff like that. And me and Remus also have mm -hmm. a very similar like thought process on like what narratives and kind of like writing styles we like um probably as a consequence of being friends for like 18 years <laughs> um, but uh, we both grew up uh in palm beach county so uh mm -hmm. we're from uh that part of south florida and then i have some family in fort lauderdale too but uh we went to art magnet schools for middle school and high school so we went to very fine artsy ones um, if you know anything about the high school magnets in South Florida, um, there's two arts magnets in Miami and one uh, West Palm. So the West Palm one is Dreyfus, where we went. Um, mm -hmm. And we were kind of like the two kids who were slacking off and not really slacking off because we were just making comics. <laughs> um, well, speak for yourself. I was a <laughs> you were good working and boy. I slacked <laughs> off. You were seen as kind of sort of slacking off because you did whatever you wanted. Okay, yeah, no, there was, 
in junior year, I we, we had to take like AP 2D classes. And so they split the 2D classes into like photography, printmaking, painting and uh, sculpture or whatever. And I was in the photography class, but it was right when I decided I wanted to start doing comics. So I just refused to take pictures like the entire year. And my teacher was just like, okay, you don't have to actually take pictures, but can you just do something that's like based on the assignment? <laughs> was, I uh, guess like. For both of us, it was like, we were always really heavily interested in narrative structure and narrative things um, and like narrative media making, but we didn't really get like, comics like into comics proper I think so we were both like juniors in high school ish and junior uh senior in high school um and then we went to college at different colleges but like we um both got really into the indie scene we started like doing um cons and stuff and that's just how we got to where we are now <laughs> um yeah and yeah I forget what else we talked about in that uh little conversation it was kind of short yeah. Um, well, I mean, the sensory was a big part of it. And honestly, this is also reminding me of um, this isn't the first time we've been we both sort of been on our childhood nostalgia shit because like in high school, we actually collaborated on a gallery show together um, about childhood where we made like little comics and then we built like a maze in the ga in the gallery and people would like go through the maze to get to the comics. Our, our so. had an empty room or the visual department. Uh, had an empty room that they kept open that students could apply to put a gallery in and as long as it wasn't like obscene a teacher would say yes um so a lot of weird things went down in like galleries really really neat <laughs> and it's, it's like a drive and uh dash and new world in miami um they're all public schools which is really mm -hmm. fun but the florida school system is that doesn't give them very much money <laughs> um so we definitely, um, like, uh, it's really interesting thinking about when I was a kid, the reason mm -hmm. I decided to go to art schools, like the magnet schools in Palm Beach County specifically. And it was mostly because I liked drawing and the public schools were really bad. Like, so you get a slightly better education and you get like, like you get to do the thing you like and it's a uh, performing arts plus visual arts. So it's all those things combined. Um, and that's really common for a lot of the kids in that school system. So it's not like all of us go on to actually pursue a career in the arts. A lot of people from the other uh, majors might not, but mm -hmm. it's really interesting to think about like that as a part of like our growing understanding or like how we started growing our understanding of like what we mm -hmm. like narrative and stuff because it yeah started really early for us because we were like in an environment where we were being encouraged to develop like an aesthetic style as we were literally like surrounded by stuff that was like influencing our aesthetic style yeah, yeah. so I think that also has a um like a hand in how heavily like we tie it to kind of like Florida where we grew mm -hmm. up for sure yeah and you've you've moved both of you have moved to a couple different like major cities has like um has the act of moving to to other locations influenced like your your work in specific ways i think yeah like i am very um i'm like whenever i like work on a comic or like i have an idea it's usually very like grounded in whatever i'm currently experiencing um um so you can sort of like if you look at like my comics you can sort of see like oh these are the ones that are like processing florida and then these are the ones from when i lived in providence and you can tell because the architecture suddenly changed in the backgrounds and stuff and now i'm back in gainesville and things are like different again um all i want to do is make comics about grad school it's weird um but i think like i'm and I, we talk about this in the conversation but i'm personally a, a, like really into like the feeling of nostalgia and ennui and it's something I like really love to embrace and I think moving is interesting because like whenever you like leave a city behind um but like you still like have memories of it and, it, and you ever like come back to it it does feel very like weird to like be back in that space it has like not to be um dramatic but there's like ghosts right 
um everywhere you go so I have like I feel like moving because I like I move a lot just I've had to um and I feel like there's definitely like feelings like that that always kind of impact the way I see what I'm doing yeah I kind of feel that way I feel like um I don't notice it as overtly um but like it's for me it's more like in my adult life uh, experiences, I guess, rather than like what city they're tied to necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, like I went to school in New York, uh, Remus went to school in Philly, and then we lived in Philly for a year. And then we both moved to Providence. And now I just moved to Baltimore to move in with my partner son, me. So I have lived in a lot of places over the past like 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely have very like specific, um, like, memory sets for all of them. And they definitely do impact my work. But I think for me, it's a slightly maybe different, more tactile like way than like a, a theme and structure way, maybe. I'm an air sign. It's all like, it's all the big high level, like narrative stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> Quintuple Aquarius. <laughs> nice. Um, I want to open the conversation up to, to all four of you now, and I want to invite anybody who has any questions, you can either um, click on the raise your hand button in the reactions uh, button of your, your Zoom screen, or if you want to type your question into the chat, um, I can read your question for you, however you feel most comfortable asking questions. Um, but I wanted to ask real quick, um, both pieces in this issue were collaborative projects. Um, and I was wondering if, uh, anyone who wants to could talk about your experiences working with somebody else in your pieces. Um, I know that Jamila and Buttercup, you, you already talked a little bit about it, but um, could, could you talk about both the power of collaboration and then also the challenges that come with it? And I don't know who wants to start first. Yeah, I, I love like collaborating with folks and like as a writer, I want the artist to be able to put themselves and like their own like sensibilities. And like, I trust, like I'm working with them because I like, I love their work. So I want to make sure that they have freedom to be able to do what they want to do as well. Um, and I'm usually always down to like switch stuff up. Um, and I feel like I always learn a lot more about comics and about storytelling, working with folks. So I like to, have conversations and like have uh, me and Buttercup had meetings and it was really great to be able to like connect and have like a quick chat about the cover and just like figure that out together. Um, I guess the challenge, um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if like me, Buttercup, I don't know if you had like challenges, oh. but I don't think I did. No, the, the there okay. were no challenges. <laughs> I, I think I, we communicated well, like together. Yeah, and, I, yeah. I was I was actually gonna say that like I don't want to like superimpose this motivation on you, Jamila, but like I find working collaboratively and like very intentionally as like a way of like building a found family in a in mm. a weird way, and like uh, you kind of see a person out in space who makes things that you like, and you're like, hey, would you like to like work together on something? And like if you really vibe that's just like it's like nice it's like you have you've like found a new friend or if you have a friend who you want to collaborate with like that's mm -hmm. a way of shoring up that bond and I feel yeah. like uh like before this process me and Jamila were acquaintances but now I feel like we're friends and I like it's yeah. really exhilarating because like we got to make something that we're both really proud of you know yes but, and that's happened with me and Robin like I live for Robin um <laughs> and so I like low-key was like a big Buttercup fan and I did it recognize you at SPX mm -hmm. um and it wasn't until like later I DM'd you like oh shit that was you <laughs> um and then like I was like I love your work so much and just right. standing up and stuff so yeah uh, uh, do you guys, always do you... low-key was like I really want to work with them <laughs> uh can I tell you about can I tell them about the um uh Valentine's Day thing oh yeah <laughs> 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 this is Jamila's partner Jamar uh, commissioned me behind the scenes after we had already started this project like uh, like he got in touch with me and was like hey so 
Jamila's a really, really big fan. And so I want to commission you to do the val our Valentine's the Valentine's Day present for her. And I was like, ooh, I get to be sneaky. This is fun. Like this is like I don't usually do messy stuff, but this feels like I'm just like touch, I'm, I'm putting my toe in the water. This is really yes. nice. And uh uh so Jamar like took a video of it once like uh it was delivered and Jamila split second as soon as she looked at it she was like this is buttercup and like <laughs> the moment when i was watching that video when she said that i was just like this is so beautiful like i'm so happy to be working with this person <laughs> be friends with them now that's just, it was just great yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like um i make work both by myself and collaboratively and i think like a lot of people don't expect comics even when if you are working by yourself to be as collaborative as it is and it really is collaborative in a lot of ways and I really like working with a team like when you really like work with someone like me and Remus have done a bunch of weird little projects over the years because we're like just we like working together so we keep doing it mm -hmm. um, uh, and like when it is like that like when you find someone who's like work you really like or work, work you really like want to and you like click it's just really great and mm -hmm. like as a uh, someone who like gets scripts sent to me like oh do you want to be on my project too also like really really love when writers are like hey I want this to be collaborative let's do it together versus like here's my script just draw it like mm -hmm. it's so much more engaging when the writers are like yeah let's be a collaborative team because that's what makes it really like interesting and kind of like live I guess like I find I always find like the work better for it too yeah, like I, I, like Mara said, we do, we've done a lot of stuff together and honestly collaborating is like my favorite thing. And it's something I've been leaning into more on, on like the grad school side than like the comic side, just because I haven't really had time to draw because I'm a full-time PhD student. Um, but like, the, even when I'm working on something by myself, I still often sort of treat that process as more collaborative because I'm very much a person that like, likes bouncing ideas off people um, and sort of like talking through things and like getting like a lot of feedback. Um, and I feel like my best stuff is when like, and it's usually like Mar, cause we know each other so well. So I feel like I can just DM Mar at any time and be like, hey, can you look at this for me? Um, but you know, I have like a, I have like a handful of people who are like my sort of go-to people. Um, and so even that, I sort of see that as like even a collaborative process too, so. Yeah, I feel like the conversation is really the respiration that gives life to the piece, you know? Um, exactly. Like, even when I'm working on something individually, same as Remus, like, I'll show it to all my friends to be like, hey, is this good? And like, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, you know what, you, you could add a little bit more life here and there. And like, I'm really like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. And like, that's what really, really hones it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, speaking of collaborators, we do have a question from the audience from Robin Smith. <laughs> Is that a dab? <laughs> I had to like turn off my phone first. I didn't want it to be. Oh, okay, yeah. What? Okay, so I have a comment and I have a question. So first, I just wanted to say, Buttercup, you're so cool. <laughs> Get out of here. I love Thank you. you around so much. It's so good. And I like really identify with what you said about like, you know, collaboration and family. And I mean, even though, I mean, I've never met you, but I'm like, you know, Jamila, and Jamila. like, I was just like, oh, okay. Well, we're all kind of like, I don't know. We haven't worked together, but it kind of feels that way anyways. Right, yeah, it um, Also, Jamar had actually messaged me and asked, who is that person that Jamila is working with, right? Like really loves. <laughs> and he is so sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I was like, I can't remember. And I was like, I got this. And I That's tried so to find a very sneaky way to ask Jamila because <laughs> I couldn't remember either. And then I found you on Instagram and then followed you. I was like, okay, this is never going to happen again. I'm always going to know who you are, but it also, I love your work. Okay, question. My question was, um, um, like, if you, I, again, I love Real Realms so much, 12 pages, I need more, like, if y'all were gonna, like, continue, have you talked at all about, like, how much farther it would go, like, 
even the fact that you, I mean, you both in your talks, you both brought up the fact that you thought, you know, more of the backstories, even to go as far as to like map out the, like have the architectural drawing of the, like the building or whatever, like all of that, like work, it's so deep just for 12 pages. And I completely understand like why that needs to exist to have such good 12 pages. But like, now you have all this, like, you have a whole skeleton, you have like everything's create even more. My hands are moving a lot. So I was <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, uh, five seasons in a movie. What? Obviously. <laughs> five seasons in a movie. That's what we right? got planned. <laughs> Listen, I would love to do more. Um, yeah, and I'd love to work with Buttercup again. I feel like with it being set up as like a reunion episode, it can go either way with like maybe we see the season and like what happens throughout that season or what happens after. Or it could be like a completely different timeline because they've been around forever. So um, yeah, we like we we've talked about that. We it's definitely talked about it. Time, time and uh and money, you know, we'll figure it out. But mm -hmm. I, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about the prospect. I like to think about this this universe a lot more than I like to let on. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, also, uh, uh, Remus, when you were saying that, like, uh, I'm an air sign, dot dot dot. I was like, oh, it just occurred to me that, like, the idea of thinking of the sisters each as like triple air, like triple elemental signs. That never, like, it, in the whole process, that never occurred to me. That would be like a perfect. Anyway, that's you're adding to the lore. Thank you so much, Remus. <laughs> So happy to thank you. <laughs> I think if, if everyone's okay with it, I think we have time for one more question. Is that all right with everybody? Um, and Carl has a question. Hey, everybody, can you hear me? What's up, everybody? Yep. Mine isn't so much a question, but it is a comment that, so it is just, first off, all of you all are so dope. I ran across this literally by happenstance. I was on Twitter. And I saw the art uh, that Buttercup did. And I was like, oh, this is dope. This is dope. I clicked the link. And then I see it's like, OK, we're going to be talking about South Florida. And I'm like, I'm from Tampa. <laughs> like, I'm literally in Tampa right now. I'm actually, um, I live out in Los Angeles. I'm an animation writer. But I saw Black folks. I saw, <laughs> I saw the uh, South Florida. And I just want to say, you guys all did a wonderful job. I'm definitely going to check out the comic. Uh, like. It was it, it was been fantastic. I love the community reference, Buttercup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, as someone who also just has a uh, you know kind of a interest in comics myself, um, it, it, it was dope to learn. You guys were very informative. Every uh, I just you know I googled it. Everything sounds super dope. So thank you all for you know sh sharing this knowledge and taking the time to do this. That's it. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> thanks, Carl. Um, yeah, and really quick, thanks, Neil. What the heck for facilitating all this? The real VIP. Thank you. This has been such a great experience, and it wouldn't have happened without you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This was really fun. This was a really great and fun event. I'm so happy. Um, and uh, like I could go on for a lot longer, but um, it does seem like a good place to to conclude things. So um, thank you, Jamila and Buttercup and Remus and Mar um, for such a great conversation. Thanks everybody who, who joined and folks who asked questions. Um, also, thank you so much for a wonderful issue of Spiny Orb Weaver. It's really fantastic. Um, I am pasting in links to um, all of the artists plus uh, Spiny Orb Weaver number three and um, some Radiator Comics Studio links we have a few things that we wanted to share. Uh, Jamila, um, Black Jose Press has a new book, right? Yes. So uh, more Robin shout outs here. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> I read a Kickstarter to republish a reprint of Robin's The Status Angriest Black Girl in Town. It is a beautiful comic uh, that talks about the intersection of mental health and Blackness. Um, it's so good. And it's available in my shop at Black Chelsea Press. Um, yeah, check it out. Digital and print. Prints like it's really pretty. So. <laughs>
it is really great. Uh, thanks, Jamila. Um, oh, so I wanted to share a few things coming up for Radiator Comics Studio. Um, so uh, this Sunday, June 13th, and on Sunday, June 27th, um, at 5 p.m. Eastern, we're hosting our semi-monthly social event, Cartoonist Coffee. If you make comics, please join us for casual small group conversations with other cartoonists. Um, and then a week from today, the 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern, we are hosting How Do You Draw Sexy Lines? Um, Sophia foster Domino, Becca Tobin, and uh, Mia Schwartz are gonna be in conversation with Carter Monier. This event is only for audiences over the age of 18 and it will not be recorded. Um, on the 19th, um, at 3 p.m. Eastern, local cartoonist Eric Bonham will be doing a demonstration of character design using ink to bring characters to life. And um, every single Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, we host Open Studio, which is a quiet work time for you to work on your comics in the telepresence of others. So we do like little 20 minute um, concentrated drawing sessions. And then we do like a 10 minute break where you can socialize with folks. It's really fun. Um, and then also, um, we still have copies of Sun and Sand Comic Anthology, which Jamila um, and I co-publish uh, through Radiator Comics and Black Jose Press. It features 10 wonderful comics about South Florida. And um, if you go to sunsandcomics.wordpress.com, you can read them all for free online, or you can download a free PDF, or you can request a physical copy. And if you cover the shipping and handling, we'll mail you a copy. Um, so information and links to register for all of the events can be uh, found at radiatorcomics.com slash studio. Um, thank you so much, everyone, uh, but especially to Jamila Rouser, Buttercup, Remus Jackson, and Mar Julia, also to Ulite Arts and the Knight Foundation. And um, thanks again for joining us. I hope everyone has a great rest of the evening. Um, happy reading, everybody. Bye.